does Rannoch Moor and a banana have in common? They both hold about 80% of water. So there's a fun little fact for you. Anyways, Stripey and I are heading into Rannoch Moor for a nice isolated remote wild camp. We're going to get as far away from the road as possible. And this track that leads you from behind the King's House there takes you right far in. And then we'll hopefully get the tents set up miles away from any civilization. So should be good. There's certainly no shortage of water. It is just blanket bog. I wonder if anybody's actually tried to walk in a straight line across Rannoch Moor. Like you could start and then um, there's the Victoria Bridge, the hotel in the West Highland Way, and just do a straight line, or try and do a straight line, to Rannoch Station. It'd be pretty difficult. There's a challenge for somebody. Not me though. <laughs> That's us just reached Black Corrie's Lodge. You're obviously not allowed in the grounds, so they put this access path around the back. So, let's push on. Well folks, it's almost midday and for the first time since this morning it's actually stopped raining. So hopefully we get a little break. I think it's many arrive again later on this afternoon and through the night we'll see what happens. Today is the 5th of November and I was last wild camping on the 10th of September that cracker that I had with Kev up in Kintail but other than my, my birthday weekend I've not been really out just a combination of crap weather I wasn't very well last week and then obviously just adult stuff that gets in the way it's good just to get out have a plan B and camp a little bit lower and uh, just enjoy being out I suppose eh? Well, 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 the sun is out. We stopped for a bite to eat. The rain went off again. And we have some brief blue sky days. However, it's looking a bit dark and ominous over by Bukowet of Moor. When you think about it, it's quite amazing that to the east of me they managed to float a railway over the bog and then over to the west of me we've got the A82 which also crosses the bog It really is just a wild expanse of not very much but yet it's got its appeal when the sun hits the bog and the lock-ins it is really nice and at the moment I've got a view right down Glencoe well the track has just ended abruptly it's going to be a bog trot from now on yeah the track comes here and then it just peters out boggy McBog face
Okay, so we've got three kilometres of this boggy path to go and we're after this little building on the map called Tyna Kruik and we're hoping there'll be some nice grass for pitching around the little building I don't know if it's a ruin, I've not researched this, I've not been there before so if there's a roof on it, it might be somewhere where we can socialise tonight rather than being stuck in our tents but we shall find out so it should be another half hour before we get there Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to bog country. Now I'm regretting leaving my trekking poles in the car. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's the way I came. Oh, I go up and over a bit. Stripey loves the bog. Ask him. What do you think of the Scottish bog? Beautiful. Beautiful? Aye. Uh, Thought as much. Probably only good for whiskey. That's it. Right, so Stripey spotted the hut. It's got a red roof, it's gone out of sight at the moment. The stripers took the high road, and I've took the low road, more direct. So we'll see who gets here first. <laughs> well, it's about grim in here. Oh well, let's find somewhere to pitch. I think I found a nice pitch here by the river. Stripey's found a little hilltop, but you could get two tents in here. There's another pitch just here. But I'm going to go. You can see my rucksack there. Happy days, the scarp is up. So Stripey's gone for a more exposed pitch, but it does offer slightly better views than me. You can see, you can see out over the loch. And he's got his DCF Duo Mid. Yeah, so I am just tucked down in there next to that little river. Are you giving us a quick tour? You can have a look. Yeah. <laughs> For example, eh? this one. Drum roll. Drum. This one is not known, but you have two here. I can open either side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty handy, I think. You've got the A-frame set up. Yeah, of course. Oh, you're going to... Uh... It's like a castle. <laughs> That's good, like. The... Having an A-frame makes all the difference. So you can sleep in between and not behind it. Single skin. So it's just gone 4 o'clock, sunset is in 25 minutes, it's going to be a long night and it's not even December yet. So uh, tonight's entertainment, I'm going to be listening to the Gossip Mongers podcast, which has got David Errol and Joe Wilkinson. And I think Joe Wilkinson, he played the postman in Afterlife with Ricky Gervais, so it's really quite funny. So if you can make out that that's uh, on the Google I I player, podcast player. So it says, David Errol and Joe Wilkinson read out unsubstantiated rumours set in, sent in by listeners. At the end of each episode, they choose their favourite piece of gossip and then it goes through to the Gossip World Cup finals. It's really quite crude, so uh, if you like that sort of type of banter, then it's, it's worth a listen. So that's tonight's entertainment sorted out. Stripey also kindly gave me some of his whiskey. It's not pee, honestly. But it um, doesn't look much, but there's 100ml in there, so there's a good couple of snifters. And there, that'll help the evening go smoothly as well. So I'm going to chill out just now and I'll bring you back later on. Right, I'm going to throw this out there, see what you think, and you can let me know in the comments section below. But somebody was asking on Instagram, they were looking for advice on a particular footwear, like flip-flops or neoprene socks, for going out at night for a pee. So I kind of thought, well, why would you want to go out your tent at night, have to get your sleeping bag, open the door, put the boots on, go out, 
have your pee, come back in cold, why not just have a pee bottle and you, you don't have to worry about additional footwear. So for example, I've got this bottle, that's whiskey, I told you earlier, um, it's got a decent sized neck, Lucas Aid bottles are good as well, you just keep that somewhere by the side, so if you wake up during the night needing a pee, you can take care of it there and then. So I suppose my question is to you, do you use a bottle? Or do you go outside because you think it's disgusting peeing in your tent? I know one of my friends, he thought it was disgusting. He, he told us all to stop being lazy <laughs> and just get outside. And my friend Hendo, he uses a Ziploc bag. Uh, don't fancy that. Well, the wind has fair picked up. I'm guesstimating 50 miles per hour. My tent is dancing. Is that you, Stripey? Hey, bud. Oh. <laughs> there goes my title for my, my new video. <laughs> right, I've changed the colour of the vlog light so it's not that psychedelic, sort of blue lilac colour. Uh, but anyways, I've not long had my dinner. Stripey came over, had a, had a natter with him. Um, just a shout out to Hannah from the Fell store, who kindly sent me a sample of this Expedition Foods. And it was a macaroni cheese. It was just basically to see how it compared against the Summit Heat version and I have to say uh, it was nice, it was just a bit not as cheesy as the Summit Heat version and this one isn't quite as calorific although I do think these come in two sizes as well uh, I would buy it again if the Summit Heat one wasn't available but this goes in second place but other than that folks I'm going to just fire up the um, Glossop Mungers um, podcast and enjoy that for the rest of the evening. It's half six, so we've got about three and a half hours to kill before bedtime. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you in the morning. Hello, this is a podcast about gossip, dirty laundry, chitter chatter. And back fence trickle prattle. In each episode, Joe Wilkinson and David Earl in oh. All right, sharp, sharp. Oh, good morning, campers. That is seven o'clock. That was a right good sleep. Oh, man. Rained on and off during the night, but nothing, nothing major. Oh, jeez. Oh. Woo! There was an interesting thread on Walk Highlands, and they were talking about the, the chap, at the original poster, he was um, a bit concerned because what he was doing is he had the boil in the bag wayfarer meals. That's obviously not a wayfarer meal, but um, he was worried that obviously if he's doing a boil in the bag, and then he was making a cup of tea with the water afterwards, was the ink leaching into the water, and then also pointed out that there could be plastics on the bag that could be leaching into the water as well. So the conclusion was that it wasn't safe to drink that water which I was quite surprised that I wouldn't have thought twice about using the water so anyway it kind of it got me thinking about these bags about how safe these are I mean they're designed for hot water but it doesn't say anywhere on the packaging that these are BPA free so I'm probably being paranoid because for how often I use these a few times a year um, Obviously they say you shouldn't drink a bottle of water that's been left in the car in the sunlight because obviously the, the chemicals are released in the, the bottle and it can cause breast cancer in women and all sorts of things like that. So there could be a risk. Um, you know, you can't be too careful these days. I suppose the, the option is to use a reusable silicon bag, add the hot water to that instead of using these. Or just use these once and then put it in the bin afterwards because I reuse these, which could be an issue. Um, I might email the manufacturers and actually ask, you know, are these actually safe? I probably won't get a, a straight answer, but it's food for thought, excuse the pun. And that is current scenes, folks. 
rather damp outside. Packing up has to be the worst bit about wild camping. Especially when it's a bit wet and damp. Right, that's the sleeping gear done, that's one thing I suppose. Just the rest of this mess. Getting in my clothes. Still got a coffee to drink. And a porridge to eat. Apparently Rannock Moor is roughly 50 square miles of just pure bog and water. And apparently you could lift the Lake District and then drop it into Rannock Moor. Mm -hmm. 